Well, thanks for joining us, guys. I think it's only fair to get Notts County's view on the game. So we'll start with you, George. How would you reflect on your season so far? Um, it's been a little bit frustrating, I feel, because we've we've played really well, I think, all season. And like our biggest downfall has been like defensive errors. The like, first game of the season against Dover, we, we should have picked points up against Dover because it seems like everyone else has really. And obviously, if we're pushing for promotion, it's the sort of team that we should be beating. And it's it's games such as Boreham Ward uh, and who was it uh, Hartlepool, where you saw we played so well in those games and we should have come out with at least a draw. And it's disheartening to not get the result, but when you reflect on the way we played, it gives you a little bit of belief that we can put, if we can push that on through the season and you know just start scoring goals, we can push on. Who would you say is the sort of star men to look out for, Tom, in terms of, say, County's team? Obviously, you've got Carl Wooten there, who's got to popped up with a few goals this yeah. season. You've got Alex Lacey at the back as well, who's well known to Yeovil fans. Who would you say is the player for us to look out for? I'd say there's two. I'd say um, Ruben Rodriguez. So he's just come, he's new to English football. Um, he, he didn't bed in straight away and hardly sort of, you know, gave him a good three or four weeks just, just trying him in the team. Uh, he's exciting. He reminds me a little bit of Carl Roberts. Um, hasn't quite got the goals we thought he would yet. But yeah, he's a really creative player. And I think the fact that he's he's come from abroad and opposition might not actually be able to um, do their, their scouting homework on him beforehand, I think makes him quite exciting. But I think I speak for most Knots fans and it might be one, unless you're actually watching the Knots games regularly, you might not pick out. But um, Dion Kelly Evans. So... Um, Plays at right back usually. He's been filling in at left back. Honestly, every game, even the games we lose, you could give him an eight out of ten. Um, it doesn't matter if he's playing a, you know, a six foot four striker. He will hammer him in the first minute. He will go straight in. He will win every tackle. He will give a hundred percent. So, um, I'd say surprisingly, maybe Rodriguez and Kelly Evans, they're my two picks. Nice one. As well, say last season, we enjoyed some quite exciting games. The over winning one and the, a hectic afternoon in the FA Trophy. How do you look back on those fixtures? I think um, the FA Trophy, personally, was the turning point in not season. I think when, when our first fixture against you was very towards the start of the season, wasn't it? Where we were in a real pickle over the summer where we didn't really know if we were going to be a club anymore. We made about six or seven signings within one day before the start of the season. So I think if you were to ever play Notts last season at the start of the season, it was a good time to play us. And I think the results sort of show that from last season. But, you know, Yeovil are, we always look at them as a bit of a bogey team, I think. Mm. We always really struggle against Yeovil. Yeah, I'd agree. But yeah, going back to sorry, what I was saying, like Notts were so inconsistent that we seemed to hit that Yeovil game and we finished the game with nine men um, on the pitch. And I remember it was literally hanging on. Um, we were at the 2-0 lead and then you overall got the goal back, but that definitely is when things started to turn and the players started to believe, I think. Um, and I think if, if the season hadn't have, have finished, I feel like starting to snowball from that, I do feel like Notts had the chance of catching Barrow because the form and the performances were incredible from then on, really. Yeah, so that gets on to my next point, really, in the sense of if it wasn't for COVID and or kind of looking back on last season in general, were you sort of feeling disappointed for the playoff final defeat and do you feel it could have gone differently if things were just slightly different in the world? Absolutely, yeah. Um, our last game of the season was against Eastleigh and we beat them 4-0 and there was just the performance. It was so professional because there was so much, so many question marks whether the game was going to go ahead and there was just no questions asked of the players really because they went out, they did that performance and you were sort of thinking, what an awful time for the season to end for us, really, because the momentum we gathered was probably the best I've ever seen, not for a few years now. So, yeah, it, it was frustrating. And like I agree with Tom. I think we really could have caught, caught Barrow because they were falling off and we were hitting a really good run of form. Tom, what's it been like for you not being able to go to the games this year and sort of watching from afar? Um, uh, it is, you can tell there's, there's no... There's no life at the games. Um, we spoke to Charlie Slater, who's the, the BBC Radio Nottingham um, commentator. He came on our podcast a couple of weeks ago and he said it's completely soulless. He said he's spoken to players and they've actually said to him that the enjoyment factor has gone out of the game. Um, from uh, when, when it all went down, the, the league was originally, they said two or three weeks, which we, we knew wasn't realistic, but I never thought it would actually be 
be this long. Um, it's certainly different. There is obviously still the same passion with all the fans, but just the, the whole match day experience is obviously diluted massively. And knots were chosen at the end of September um, for the one of the pilot games, and we actually managed to get tickets in in the in the ballot. And I think it was two days before um, it was cancelled. So that's just made it. I just want to get back to a game even more. Yes, of course. Um, for, for looking ahead to the game now next week, who are the Yeovil players you'll be looking at thinking might be a danger man for us? Uh, well, I'll, I'll start with, with mine. Um, Joe Quigley. He's, he's got a few goals. You know, he's, he's also got a few cards. And I think from, from like a forward player, you're sort of thinking he's got goals in him and he's not minding getting really stuck into the game. So that, that's the player that I, I've chosen. Yes, yeah, say so he's been great for us so far this year. He's popped up with goals, and he's, he's he might be a big man, but he sort of has that way about him where he can actually get other players involved in the game as well. So yeah, I think I said a really good pick from you. Yeah, um, yeah, I've got one. I've got two. I've got one on the back burner, sort of Reese Murphy. I know he's not been in for the for the past three or four games, but he's a, he's a goal machine. Literally <laughs> seventeen last season. You, you can't ever overlook a, a striker of that quality, even if they're not in form. But I think Ruben Reed, for me. He's, he's got, I think it's like 120 goals um, in the Football League. Yeah, I remember him from Plymouth, a brilliant footballer. I mean, he's been, he's been at some great clubs in the Football League and, you know, you don't score that many goals without being a threat. And we've seen this so far this season that Notts have got a sort of a, a lapse in concentration at the back in most games. There's always one or two incidents where something will go wrong and I feel like he's a player with his, with his uh, quality that could make us pay. And finally, lads, what's your predictions then going into the game? I honestly think it's it's so hard to call because Notts haven't played since I think the 28th of December. And before that, you've had breaks of two, three weeks. I don't think you can call a Notts game confidently at all. I've gone into saying 3-0 against Maidenhead earlier we've lost. I've gone into saying we've, we've struggled against Stockport, we've won. I'm going to go for 2-1 Notts though. I'm going to Rodriguez and Wharton to get the goals. Uh, I'm going for a 1-0 to not. So I think it's going to be a very, very cagey game because like Tom said, we've had a break out. But I do, obviously, Yeovil have turned a corner now. Obviously, you have to beat in Torquay. So it's not like they're going to be an, e an easy target to, mm. to what the league suggests. But I, I think what an Nick one. Yeah, 1-0.